Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing fantastic. You guys get to watch me possibly ruin maybe a perfectly good guitar. Here we go. Man, is my workspace a mess. Holy shit. So I got a few things going on. I'm still waiting for the tuners for the Kramer. But, uh, well, as you can see there on Wally in a Box's Kramer, I have the inlays on the neck kind of different from what they used to be. At least a few of them are. But until the tuners come, we'll be working on this guy. So let me get back to it again. Hey, what's going on? Getting a little bit of the nut action done over here. So I've got my bone nut over here slotted and uh, just kind of fine tuning the action height a little bit. Right now I got everything set at close to possibly an 18 thousandths to a 19 thousandths. I will fine tune it once I get the guitar tuned up, neck relief and action height set where I want it. Uh, I love this damn tool. This tool here is really, really great for finding out, say, your uh, fret height. And what you do is you put this on the flat part of the neck, zero it out, and then put it on top of the fret. Make sure that the center of the fret is in the center of this pin, and it gives you pretty much the exact height of your fret. It works out pretty good when you're using feeler gauges. You don't have to sit there and try to figure it out with the feeler gauges and putting some type of a straight edge and then going underneath on top of the fretboard uh, up against the fret to see where how many thousands or what the height of your fret is so basically i found out what the number was on the gauge and then end up adding an 18 thousands to that with the feeler gauges and i was able to set my nut basically kind of right where i want it give or take and when i mean give or take when I finally get the final uh, setup of the guitar done, then I'll actually know once there's a little bit of relief in the neck where the action height is at the first fret, which is probably going to be a little bit on the high side because you're adding a little bit of relief. So it's going to change it, you know, probably like in the thousands area. Not much at all. 
So you saw in the beginning of the video that I put the strings on the guitar, uh, the high low, the high and the low E strings on here, the bridge and the tailpiece. The reason why I did that is because I don't know exactly where the stock pickups fell underneath the strings. So I wanted to make sure that the pole pieces on these pickups were right where they're supposed to be underneath the strings, that way there was no problems. So what I ended up doing is I picked up, uh, I went over to my music store over here and I picked up two brand new uh, pickup mounting rings. The ones that I have are different from the ones that uh, were on this guitar. The ones that I have are a little bit tighter over here. So when I ended up uh, kind of feeling out where they're going to fit, um, there was a little bit of a gap over here where they routed out the body. So that wasn't good. So what I ended up doing is taking a look at the old pickup rings compared to what I have. And there was a little bit of difference over here. So there was a little bit more meat on this on the sides over here than the ones that I already had uh, stored. So spare parts, you know. So I ended up going to the music store, picking up the right ones, putting them on here. And now the uh, pickups are lined up exactly underneath the pole pieces. I didn't use the F spacing pickup that I thought I was going to use for the uh, bridge because this is not an F spaced guitar. So I've got the wiring done. I used the classic um, or vintage cloth mesh wires and that's for the three-way switch. I got that all routed inside there already. And what I did is I put some heat shrinking tubing around them. So making kind of like a nice harness and I got all the wires set for there. And no, I did not use telephone wire to do this. <laughs> So basically what I want to do now is kind of probably get the rest of the strings on here uh, after getting the height of the nut set up. Now I got to shave the top of it and kind of lower that part so the strings won't be sinking so far into the nut. What I ended up doing is I got a uh, tusk nut that was already cut. I ended up picking up a few of them. Uh, let's see here. So here's one of them right here. And so instead of having to make a nut from scratch, I figured I'd kind of like, you know, speed up things a little bit and buy a couple of them that were already, already set up. All I really have to do now is adjust the height. I shaved the bottom of them a little bit and uh, still was kind of a little bit on the high side. So once I correct the top of the nut, I ended up uh, using the nut files. That I, these are really good nut files. And... Uh, you don't have to worry about them breaking either, like the thin ones that I have, they ended up breaking. Uh, these guys here are really, really good. And what I end up doing is kind of going with the angle of the towards the peg head and until it starts to kind of rub up against the feeler gauge. And then I kind of finish it off by rounding it a little bit towards the peg head. And that gives it to where it's got a nice slope to it. They shouldn't bind, you shouldn't have any problems with that. The neck is pretty much done, frets are done, the body has been polished out, uh, came out really, really good. I'm really happy with uh, the way this epoxy resin came out. And you saw on the back of the guitar that it was not as shiny or had a real gloss finish. It's because all the black on the back of the neck, the headstock, and the body and the sides, I've turned into a matte finish. It's going to suck because of the fingerprints, you know, getting on there kind of hard to put a matte finish to you know keep it clean but I kind of like it a little bit better on, on the matte side and then only have the headstock and the top of the body uh, a high gloss so yeah I've got my switches laid out here I got a, a brand new three-way switch um, this is a um, oh god I can't remember what the name of this was oh shit it's not a um, uh, CTS three-way switch but so another it's an all parts one I picked up and I got the CTS pots these are push and pull so I'm going to end up splitting these guys having these guys being able to split them into single coils I got my tones and somewhere around here I have my pots or uh, caps for my tone control so I'm going to end up starting probably right now to get this nut down to where I want it to be as far as height goes. I don't think I'm going to record it because it, you're, you're watching me file nuts. You can go back into other videos and see me working on, uh, you know, 
making a nut from scratch and, and how to do it and everything else in previous videos that I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. Uh, Kramer guitar, like I said, I'm kind of waiting for waiting for parts to come in. I still haven't gotten the uh, tuners yet, and it's kind of a race right now because the old tuners that I ordered finally showed some movement, and the new tuners that I ordered are supposed to be delivered. Um, I don't know if it's going to be sometime today or sometime tomorrow, but it's kind of a race to see which one shows up. And, uh, you know, the old ones that I ordered in the first first time or the new ones that I ordered just a while ago or a couple of days ago. Another thing with the Kramer is I'm a little bit worried about is uh, I end up drilling the holes out, which will be in a different video, for the Floyd Rose. Uh... I got a feeling that there might be a little bit of a problem with the Floyd Rose that uh, this guitar came with. The blades are, are or the knives are pretty, um, pretty messed up. And I've got a brand new Floyd Rose Special, which, you know, a lot of people don't like the Floyd Rose Specials, but that's what I have. And, uh, you know, a new Floyd Rose uh, is, you know, anywhere between... 200 and some odd dollars to you know whatever they're not that cheap but a floral special isn't all that bad either so i don't know which one i'm going to use yet i gotta figure out uh you know if i can fix fix the knives that are on the old one which are you know hardened steel so it's going to be a little bit hard i will show that in the uh, next video when i start working back on the kramer after I get parts. So I'm going to start getting, working on this thing and then follow up. We'll be probably restringing it and then getting the electronics put in this thing, getting that all buttoned up and done. All right, so the strings are still stretching and this thing is pretty much strung up and somewhat set up. Final setup will be after I get the electronics put in and, uh, you know, then start testing everything out electrically, plugging it in. So what I've done is I put the remainder, four strings on this thing, tuned everything up to pitch, standard E, stretched out the strings, tuned it back up again, stretched the strings a little bit more, tuned it back up again, and then I set the uh, neck relief to 12 thousandths. I go anywhere between 10 to 12 thousandths, it all depends. Sometimes, you know, I'll, you know, depends on the neck, maybe I'll want a little bit flatter of a neck and a little bit straighter of, uh, you know, but most of the time it's 12 thousandths. Then I set the action height at the 12th fret. Uh, this is a 16th on the uh, high E and five or four sixty fours on the low E. So I got to sweep down a little bit. So there's a little bit of fret buzz going on, not much, just a very minute. I can get rid of that if I put it to five sixty fours, it'll be fine. But I don't mind just a little bit of that fret buzz. And nothing is fretting out. Everything seems to be going all right. The nut, I ended up checking that out. Now, sometimes, like I said, when you put your relief in your neck, you know, you're bringing the nut up a little bit, and that could change that could change your first fret, uh, your first fret uh, action height. So I went back and kind of checked things out, and I ended up uh, refiling all the uh, fret slots, and then sanding down and polishing the nut itself. So right now, if I stick this, this is an eighteen thousand shim underneath, say the low E string, it is touching. It's not killing it, but it is touching. So it's roughly around 18 thousandths. So everything is pretty much uh, kind of where I want it to be for right now. The neck may change overnight, don't know. So I'm gonna kind of let this sit and see if it's going to change overnight. But right now, I mean, this is what I mean by a little bit of fret buzz. So there's not much, and I'm actually hitting it pretty hard with the pick. So next I have to set the intonation and then set the pickup height on this and then get the electronics put in there. But I have to do some stuff with the Kramer because Kramer parts came in. And uh, there's some stuff that I still have to do with the fretboard as well uh, to kind of like make it match a little bit more with the body of the guitar. So I'm gonna switch 
guitars right now and put this off to the side like i said i'm gonna let this neck kind of pull itself a little bit more the truss rod on this thing is a two-way truss rod which is kind of nice i wasn't expecting that but it is a two-way truss rod so i'm gonna move stuff around over here clean up little things and scoot over to that
All right, so I got the holes drilled out for the Floyd Rose. And uh, what I want to do is kind of like check out the Floyd Rose a little bit because there's a little bit of a problem with it and see what I can do to um, either fix it or get a new one. So a nice thing about these Floyd Rose templates that I ended up picking up is basically it's the same thing as what this is. So I made a template here and basically this template fits right inside of this hole real nice a little bit on the snug side which keeps me from moving things around and it fits in there perfect so what i want to do is this template here will be used to make the rubber pad that's going to go inside there which i ordered some uh thinner rubber pads because i think the stuff that i have might be a little bit too thick for this i know the what usually the uh stock ones that come inside here are like uh real thin but the nice thing about this is, is that this guy here, basically, it's the same pattern. Really nice. So I'm going to put this off to the side and show you some other stuff here. Move everything out of the way. Set this thing down really nice. So what I did with the neck is basically kind of change things up a little bit. So the neck is a little bit on the wet side a little bit because I just oiled it again. Especially the spots where I ended up putting the new inlay. So there are the new inlays on the neck and these are also going to glow in the dark. So I have to polish up the headstock again because I got little dots of rubbing compound on it because of the fact of uh, slinging this shit around. But for right now, um, I got some unboxing to do over here because I got some parts. So let me go get those. So first off over here, I have a pretty long box. And I'm gonna get this thing opened. You can kind of see the way it's wrapped is that it came from China. And this is gonna be a replacement. It's gonna be a replacement for something that I already got, but yeah, I gotta get some new razor blades over here because even these things are here even dulling out man so i don't know how they did this and i don't want to make a big mess over here so let's see if we can pull this thing out a little bit all right so it looks like they packed this thing up pretty good a little bit too well yeah i can't get this out and see here did they put a box on top of a box here what is this? Let's so do it this way. Being very careful how deep I put the razor blade in. this stuff all over the place aren't I? All right so we got it out of there. No other parts in here? Nope. I hate this shit. Just as bad just as bad as pecking peanuts. All right so let's get this thing open here. So, I didn't really like the other Kramer neck that I picked up for the other body, so I went and I ordered another one, and this one here is basically the same thing. So this one is basically the same thing, but I've got a skunk stripe here, the neck is finished, and it's got the truss rod adjustment here instead of being down here so it looks pretty good the frets feel kind of nice and they seem to be 
pretty much all even and this comes with a adjustable locking nut so I can raise this nut up and down to get the action height that I want at the first fret and they actually did a pretty nice job so I don't like this headstock being like that I kind of like this headstock better than this headstock but it is what it is so I think what I'm going to end up doing is possibly reshaping this a little bit because I think this is a little bit on a little bit too big but yeah this is the new fretboard and again kind of nice nice inlay work with the stars did a pretty decent job all right so that's that I'll put that away nice hockey stick and so which one came first well they both came in at the same time and these are the tuners for this guy here so we got these and we got these so there are two different ones and uh, they are both 19 to 1 ratio they are not locking uh, these ones here have just a big K on it. This one actually says Caluso, and I think, uh, or am I saying it right? Glucin, Caluso. I don't know why I keep on saying Caluso. So these are probably the ones I'm going to end up using. These I'll use for my guitar. Uh, these are better, I think. I know they're packaged a hell of a lot better. These are probably like a newer version of these. So. Let's see, it's, are the model number's the same on these? Yeah, the model numbers are the same on these, so it must be a newer version. So I'm gonna use these guys here. And first thing first is, I wanna make sure that these guys are gonna fit where they're supposed to fit without any troubles. Oh yeah, they'll fit. Oh no, they're not going to fit. The holes are up above. So I'm going to have to retap some holes. Let's see these guys here. They're a little bit different or not. Let's see if these are ones are a little bit different or are they the same? No, they're the same. All right, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of drilling. Not that big of a deal. Not that big of a deal. All right, so I'm kind of cleaning up the mess that I made over here. I thought I was recording installing the tuners and it wasn't recording. So I'm getting used to this new phone, not quite liking it too much, but what can I say? So what I ended up doing is I got the tuners installed and they're pretty even with each other. They're a little bit off, not by much, but they're a little bit off. I had to make a template for this. So what I ended up doing is I took this black paint pen and I actually dabbed a little bit of paint on the pins that stick out on the bottom of the tuner in order to basically get the first one started. And after I got the first one started, I ended up you know, drilling the holes out that I made a mark. I would use this here, which is kind of like a, a, uh, uh, a reamer, and it's got a nice point on it. So I'd make my point on each pin, and then I'll give me a little indentation for the drill to follow. Kind of like a guide. Actually, it is a guide. After that, I made a template. And this is the Floyd Rose. Oh, I got a couple holes drilled in it. Whoopee. So I made a template. And this is approximately 10 millimeters. So it fits inside this hole. A little snug, but it fits inside this hole. So I'd use that as the guide going into the headstock. And then going ahead and putting, you know, lining this up where it's uh, kind of even with the ruler all the way down and drilling my holes 
for the next tuners. Now, the only thing I sucked with it is trying to hold this thing on top of here. You know, I've got to hold it like this and then have the straight edge going across. Holding it at the same time and drilling was a little bit of a pain in the ass. That's why they're a little bit on the straggled side. Um, eh, not liking it too much, but they're in and I mean, it is noticeable, but not really that noticeable. So headstock is basically done. I got to put the locking nut back in and I have to put the neck back on the body. So I need to get rid of all of these pieces of wood shavings that are all over all over this towel over here and put away a lot of these tools so I don't have a problem. So I don't have a problem with uh, scratching or marking up the bottom of that body. I don't want to, after all that polishing and everything else, I don't want to have to wet sand that body again and having to uh, rebuff it out. So I get this stuff cleaned up and put away. So right here I have two different Floyd Roses. This is a Floyd Rose Special. And, you know, it's not the best of quality, but they're a good replacement. And a lot of guitars, you know, kind of maybe the entry-level guitars come with these uh, ESPs um, well Ibanez has their own so they got their edge but the ESP guitars come with these things some Jackson guitars come with the Floyd Rose specials they're okay they're not bad they work they're decent uh, although as far as weight differences goes these things kind of feel the same but this has got a bigger block than what this one's got now the reason why I have the Floyd Rose special here is because this is a Floyd Rose 2. This is a real thing. This is not the conversion version, cheap version, whatever you want to call it of, you know. So I really don't want to get rid of the original Floyd Rose that came with this thing. And the problem I'm having are these blades here, or the knives, as some people call them. They're a little bit on the crappy side. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they got a little bit of a flat spot on them. And there's a little bit of an indentation. And I don't think these are adjustable to slide them in and out. Although I am going to take this thing apart to clean it because it is pretty dirty. So I picked up a Floyd Rose tremolo bar because I wasn't sure if he had one for this thing or not and it comes with the whole assembly so hopefully I can just swap, swap out the two and the hole be standard size hole and I know that this one here you know it's a little bit different so I'm kind of hoping that it still fits so let me see if I can try to pop this thing out it looks like it's just two wrenches uh, let's see is this gonna be a standard or millimeters I got a feeling this is going to be standard. So, grab a standard, which I probably don't have the right size here in a standard. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. It's nice having tools right here. All right, I do. So, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use a pliers on this other side because I don't have another set of wrenches down here. So, awkward, isn't it? So let's see if I can do this without marring up everything. Well, it's just going to be kind of one of those things where I got to sit there and play with it. Yes, it is. I don't know, where are you? There she is. She's coming loose now. Is it loose enough for the fingers? Yes, it is. All right, so that's that. Like I said, I don't have a trim bar that will work on this. This is a thread. Yeah, it is a threaded bar. So I don't have one. So let's see what this one here would actually be an equivalent.
to what I'm playing with here, which it looks like it may not be. Let's see here. Yeah, I think this is going to be one of those things where it's going to have to be an actual Floyd. Oh no, this does fit inside there. It's got neurons on it to lock itself in place. All right. So that's kind of a good thing. All right, so taking the original Floyd Rose apart. Let's see here. First off, I have to get rid of all these saddles and watch it be standard, right? It's not going to be metric. No, oh, it actually is metric. Wow, it's got metric on them. So removing these, I want to keep these in order the way that I take them off. And the reason being is because they are arched. So I gotta make sure that they go back on the same way they came off. And these are pretty, pretty nasty and very tight. They're not very loose. Oh, there he goes. Now it's starting to loosen up a little bit. So yeah, I might have to hit some WD-40 inside there after cleaning these things up. So I need to find a spot to put these where I can line them all up. And I think I found a spot right here. The screws are basically all the same, so I don't have to worry about that. All right. Yeah, these are pretty, pretty dirty. Pretty nasty. Yeah, I wish these blades were adjustable. I don't think they are. Number three. Wait, these are numbered, right? Number two. Yeah, these are numbered. Oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I don't have to keep them in order on the counter in any particular way because they are already in order stamped on the back of them. Okay, so now it's going to go backwards. So you got two number threes, two number twos, and two number ones. So I see how that works. These are pretty loose. They weren't very snug at all. That says number two. Yeah, it says number two on it. All right. Not a bad deal. And this has nothing on it, no number at all. Feels like somebody did put some oil on these at one point in time. So I'm gonna put these off to the side. Same one, nope, different. This is probably this one here, right? Yeah, it's this one here. Wow, these are loose. And this way I can clean these things up and get them nice and nice and clean again. A lot of finish on this thing is kind of real shitty. It's very pitted. What is this taped on there? No, oh, it's just Is that oil? What is that? No, it's oil. It smells like oil. All right, so this thing is taken apart. Put the tools off to the side. Let's focus on this. So are these able to unscrew completely? Nope. And they do not have a... Do they have a ring around the bottom of them no they got a they're pinched so they can't unscrew completely all right so there is no way that these blades can come out so i'm going to have to try to fix them let's see here if i can possibly do that
Now this is not going to be easy because I have to go on an angle here and the ang angle I need to go on is in the the block or not the block but the plate the base plate is in the way this is actually doing anything or not and actually no it is doing something Not much movement here, but it is actually doing something here. Getting rid of the burr that is on the top. This is helping out quite a bit. So good. And maybe I don't have to price out and find a new, new one. Maybe I can use the old one here. This is the angle that's going to be a pain in the ass. I don't want to create a new angle. I want to keep the angle that is on these knives. So I have to kind of use the Huh, this is actually helping them. So that's kind of a good thing. So I'll be able to fix this without having any problems. That's good because the only choice I have is either to find a new one, which I've already tried to and I can't. Even the base plate is different. So if I get a base plate uh, uh, only, the because the base plate is only like, uh, uh, it was like 150 bucks for a base plate. So if I got a new base plate, it's still not going to work out right because of these openings over here. So that would not work. So the next thing would be going with a totally new Floyd Rose or a Floyd Rose Special. And I don't want to go with a Floyd Rose Special because that's not original. take a little bit longer to try to fix. Because you want to make sure that these knives go into the groove that is on these and pivot without like feeling a click. Like right now I'm feeling a click in here. a little bit of a shift that one doesn't seem to be that bad anymore this side here still needs to be worked on quite a bit so I'll lock it in my hand and start going to town with it So you know what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to get a cup, pour myself some alcohol, rubbing alcohol that is. Drop some parts inside there. That 
and it'll clean these things up and sterilize them. Let that shit soak in there. This one's the worst one. Now it's not really look like it's doing too much on this angle here. else here I can use. I don't want to use a round one. It has to be a flat file. Let's see, this is triang triangular, triangular, angular, angular. No, I don't want to use that. It's got to be flat. Do I have something that is a little bit thinner in here that is also flat? No, it's a rat's tail. Well, nope, I am stuck using what I got. Not a big deal. Every time you make a video, it feels like you're talking to yourself, you know? It's working, but very, very slowly. All right, so let's see about this. Since I have everything apart. This goes in here. It's got a neural on it, so it's going to pull itself in when you tighten it up. If I can get it to tighten, get the screw around it. I'm going to have to press it in. That's what it is. So I have a vise that is underneath the. I have a vise that is underneath the workbench. So what I'm going to do is put this on this side. And then take the vise and push on that side, and that is going to basically lock me in. If the vise opens up that much, I don't know. and then start clamping this and that'll force that'll force this puppy in A little bit more. Pretty much got it. Yeah, heavier piece of wood though.
All right, the vise worked perfect. So I'm gonna make sure that I can thread this. There's no problems with threading. Oh, beautiful. And then I could put the coupling back on the back of this with the screw. And I should have plenty of threads to thread this in. Yep. Come on, thread in there, you bastard. There we go. All right, Wally, so you have a new tremolo bar and it's not in the way of anything. All right, so back to filing blades. This one's getting there. It's not quite there, but it is getting there. like that's I got the burr the burr is pretty much gone but there's a little bit of an indentation inside there and I hope that doesn't get in the way of things the flat spot is eh, so so I could probably work on it a little bit more but uh, yeah all right so I'm giving up for tonight getting kind of late I'm gonna get some beauty sleep maybe I'll lose a little weight while I'm sleeping god I can't believe how big I looked in that damn uh, you know and it's weird too because I'm only I'm only 200 and, and was it 250 somewhere between 250 and 245 pounds is one of the what I'm around so yeah that's kind of kind of strange so anyways, pretty much set for now. This works out perfect. All right, whammy bar. Probably not as long as the original. The original was probably a little bit longer. Who knows? So I'm gonna try to see if I can tidy these up just a little bit more. Who knows?